I have shown you how to make uh, the stroke alkanes and then uh, how you can achieve variance. So now let me show you how to make something nice using those stroke alkanes. I have here some uh, scrap clay and uh, on both uh, pieces, because I will be making two pieces, uh, I will use this Lisa Pavelka um, uh, texture sheet in order to make some sudden slice. I'm not going to show how I'm making the sudden slice because I've shown you before. I've shown you on this uh, variant of the stropel cane how you can get uh, something that is uh, similar to the Natasha B defect. And uh, that is what I'm going to use, but I'm not going to use this slice because it is too misshapen. So I'm going to cut uh, new slices and I will make uh, the central of this focal piece, the, the central part of this focal piece uh, using that um, symmetrical Natasha bead style effect. Uh, now it doesn't matter where, it, where you are in the cane, any two slices that are um, one after the other will allow you to achieve this effect even if the cane is so uneven so um, I will put these two slices together and uh, get the main area of my necklace uh, the focal point of my necklace make sure when you do this that your two slices are well stuck together that they wouldn't come apart and uh, of course you will have to uh, pass the roller over them i would not advise to use the pasta machine because as we all know the pasta machine is going to distort your pattern so just use your roller to uh, make the this whole slice together a piece uh, of an even thick thickness and uh, again I always advise to work between two sheets of wax paper because that way you will avoid the wax uh, sticking to the roller I need this piece of scrap clay to be a little bit uh, taller than it is right now for the design that I have in mind for this focal piece but yes as I was saying make sure that your uh, two slices are well stuck together and uh, make sure that when you pass the roller over them uh, you use a piece of uh, a sheet of wax paper I have done my satin slice using copper for the inlay and white for the background and I will cut it and place it at the top of my focal piece. As you have seen in from the, the picture in the title of the video, I want to achieve a kind of a more tribal look. Uh, and somehow it kind of looks a little bit African, even if I'm using this Celtic design. But um, yes, uh, and the other thing, if you decide to do this, don't do like me, do first the other part and then place the satin slice because I had to be very careful when I evened out the other stuff because I couldn't, of course, uh, use the roller over the satin slice. So yeah, so I am uh, evening out that uh, piece that's going to go right in the middle of the, of the focal piece and when you do that make sure that you roll in all directions so you don't get the piece distorted too much in one direction or another and then what i will use to fill the remaining area um, i am actually going to get a piece of the cane and uh, reduce it uh, with a square section and it is not hard I mean you can practically reduce anything if you want uh, it is very easy if you have two straight somethings blocks to uh, push with uh, 
I am using here my acrylic block and then I'm also using the Mod Podge um, scraper and as you can see I've reduced it and now I will be practically tiling the whole surface of the focal piece and then I will place the that beautiful symmetrical thing I don't know how to call it um, I will place it on top of all these so I will have some uh, dimension as well not just the uh, color and as you can see using a white wrapping and earth like colors you get this wonderful effect of not just mm, it looking like stone mosaic but it actually looking like some type of ancient stone mosaic. Uh, I am reducing that piece of cane enough uh, so the slices I'm cutting will fit perfectly in that uh, middle area. And after I'm placing all of them, I am going to even them up with a roller. And again, if you do this, make sure you place those first and only after that you place the satin slice. Otherwise, I mean, I'm not, you'll see it can be done, but it's kind of irritating how much care you need to pay not to squish that satin slice area. So you see it looks very nice. And again, make sure that you even it up uh, properly because otherwise it will not look it will not look very nice and uh, once you've um, evened it out then you can place see the beautiful mosaic effect uh, stone mosaic then you can place the the central piece on top of it and um, then another thing that I am doing uh, because I thought that it's not standing out enough with that white outline on a white mosaic thing I'm just cutting a very very thin strip of copper the same copper that I used in the southern slice to do a very thin outline framing however you want to call it of that um, middle symmetrical piece and uh, then once I place that uh, I will cut uh, the focal piece again and I'm using pretty much a tribal design even in when cutting the, the piece so uh, it will look a little bit more unusual I like to always think outside the box um, but you see how with that thin strip of copper uh, the central piece in the focal stands out a little bit more and I've still used the same colors uh, coordinated with the rest of the um, piece so now I can go ahead and uh, shape the focal piece for the necklace and I will show you in a little bit what else I did, what other pieces, beads I made for the necklace using the same uh, uh, cane, of course. But I'm shaping it a little bit, almost like a shield, but also reminiscing of the uh, African tribal masks. Yeah, that was kind of throwing me off when it came to the <laughs> dimensions and uh, make sure that you uh, trim it if you are going to go for the same type of design make sure that you trim it uh, nice and equal if uh, you need you can cut a template first and use that template to uh, to trim your piece but make sure that it is nice and symmetrical and even and all that. Good. Now this one is pretty much done. And I can move on to the second one that's done with the uh, original um, Stropel cane. 
and I will be using also a satin slice on it. This time I am using uh, the gold, the regular gold, not the 18 karat gold. And I am using the other side of the um, texture sheet. Uh, but it's the same Lisa Pabelka texture sheet. And um, I will be using uh, both parts of the um, uh, second stropel cane, the part that I have left round, and then the other part that I have reduced with a square um, a section. And I will first tile this uh, this focal point uh, focal piece. I'm going to make it rectangular, and I am tiling the uh, small slices using my rigid blade as a straight line. Um, but I am tiling those on the edge, and of course, it's valid here too because I didn't learn my lesson with the first one. First, tile and then place the southern slice. Uh, I am forming the slices of the big spiral cane on a separate sheet of wax paper and that I can afterwards even out with the, the roller, and then I will be cutting. Uh, a strip that I can place in the middle there between the tiled and the, the tiled area and the sudden slice area and then pretty much all I have left to do is to because uh, see I think that they are not well delimited so I'm putting another strip of gold there and then all I have to do is to practically uh, cut the piece and then bake it obviously and again make sure that you, all your cuts are nice and your uh, piece is even and symmetrical and you don't have any and your, all your lines are straight again you can use a template if you need and um, here we are I'm pretty much ready to uh, bake both pieces They're pretty, aren't they? Now, I'm putting some back in uh, on the white uh, cane. I'm going to use the same copper I used for the satin slice. And then on the other piece, I'm actually using bronze, even if I used gold, because I think that it will match better the, the design. And of course, I am uh, besedging, as I call it, both pieces and then I will place some bales and there we are I made these beads for the rectangular uh, piece I made a very long bale that's right in the middle and then um, I made the the beads the big ones I just put the round slices on the ends and then I tiled the rectangular slices all around the bead while these ones are just thicker slices of the spiral cane in which I just uh, poked some holes of course everything is nice and sanded and varnished and ready to uh, be set up and then for the other piece you see I put two bales one on each end of the top and then uh, I made some beads for it too. I first made these long beads. I just got some thicker slices from the white cane and I put them together to form the symmetrical uh, design. And then I just smushed them until I was able to make them into pretty much cylindrical beads. Then these ones I formed almost like the other ones. Um, you see I put uh, I tiled the surrounding cylinder and then I just put slices of the regular one and these other ones I just made them half satin slice and then the other half is just with the tiled now uh, I will be using this Kinte uh, gypsy leather cord because I think that it looks wonderful for this one and uh, for the other one, I will be using uh, jute cord uh, in the beige and brown. And uh, 
there is a problem though and I did not want to um, extend much longer the wait time for you guys but here it is raining cats and dogs and my level of pain is through the roof and my uh, cervical area is messing keeps messing up with my hands um, what I'm doing here is just the plain wrapping of the cords and I've shown you this many many times I'll link a couple of my videos so you can watch and see how you can do but oh, unfortunately what I did when I was attaching the second part of the uh, cording for this necklace that I made out of uh, black suede when I was attaching that part to the jump to the jump ring of the the flat uh, spiral bead unfortunately my hand twitched with the pliers and i broke the bead so i'll have to redo the bead i will post a photo of that necklace on my blog but i just went ahead and uh, finished editing this video so you can see how to make them because you can still get an idea on how to do them but um, unfortunately see yeah when I was attaching that area my hand that was holding the jump ring twitched and I squeezed the plier and completely broke the end of that bead I still have slide I still have that some of that cane so I'll be able to make a new bead out of it but um, this is it and you can see how uh, many things and what beautiful things you can do with the stroke cane.